Welcome to this overview of how you can monitor your OT environment with FortiSim. We're going to take a quick recap at the architecture with FortiSim. It can quickly be deployed FortiSim as a virtual appliance or hardware appliance that supports a scale out model as well. So as performance demands increase over time, you're monitoring more of your environment, you can deploy what we call worker nodes, and these form a cluster with the primary supervisor node to improve things such as reporting performance or correlation of events. Now, two of the aspects of the architecture that are really important in an OT environment are the collectors. And the collectors are available either as a physical or a virtual appliance as well. And the virtual or physical collectors have a couple of different roles. Predominantly, they are going to be collecting events from your devices, whether that's flow, syslog information, or APIs. But additionally, they will also discover the environment and collect performance metrics, which I'll explain in a moment. In terms of the operational environment, the collectors provide a couple of key functions as well. First of all, they can be deployed in different locations or set network segments, and then they also can drop irrelevant logs. And this is important for an OT environment as it helps to conserve some of the bandwidth where the collector may be deployed, which could be in a remote environment with limited bandwidth available. In addition to dropping logs, it also removes some of the resource requirements potentially that are required to process those events and store those events. The collectors also compress the events as well before they're being sent up and you can also limit the amount of bandwidth that a collector uses. Again, helping to conserve some of that bandwidth requirement potentially in some remote locations. So let's take a look at an OT use case. Within the operational environments, the use of the Purdue model can be found and that allows you to define your different segments and control those segments as well. As an example, you could have a level one, which includes things such as your PLCs, your RTUs. Level two will include a technology such as historians or HMIs. Level three is typically the control center. And levels four and five, you start to encroach on the more typical business and enterprise types of technology, such as ERP solutions, or services such as email. And then finally, level six really, is where we start to look at things such as VPNs, your cloud or SaaS based services, or IoT type devices which you're needing to communicate. Now this model can be represented in 40SIM and out of the box, there's an operational technology business service with the different Purdue levels defined in those. And here you can define your PLCs as an example in level one. And this allows us to identify and use these different modeling techniques within 40SIM to look for anomalies or incidents that are occurring. In addition to collecting logs, 40SIM also can discover these devices, as I mentioned, one of the roles that a collector can perform. And it will bring in more context about that device. So here is a 40 gate firewall. We can understand things like version numbers, the models of those devices, as well as things such as the CPU, the memory or interface utilization. Or 40 SIM could simply be doing a ping off to a device and making sure it's available and responding. So we also incorporate some of these additional operational technology capabilities. And content such as rules, reports are also available. An example here is a rule that will alert for interpurdu level traffic or interpurdu level traffic as well. So maybe we're seeing traffic going from one particular level to another and alerting. And then you can visualize all this information and one way to do that is using dashboards. So let's move across and take a quick demo. So logging into 40SIM, we're presented with a variety of different interfaces we can start from. Here we're looking at the risk view. And the risk view is calculated by looking at things like the device criticality that's being uh, monitored. It's looking at the instance that are being generated, the volumes of incidents, and determining a risk associated with that. Here we can see we've got an engineering workstation. 
and we've got the various incidents associated. So one way to start an investigation is by starting at the highest risk assets. Now, one way to influence the risk is the, through the device criticality. So I mentioned as part of the presentation that you can model your environment with a 40 sim. So how you would do that is you would move into the business services and operational technology different groups where you can see you've got your different levels and see that we've got for instance a plc and the plcs are modeled in level one we can see under level two we've got some engineering workstations and that engineering workstation is also associated with uh, the high risk device as well we saw so let's take a quick look and see what criticality we've assigned to this engineering workstation. We've assigned this as a critical asset because it is part of the OT environment, the plant actual floor network. Uh, this is a very important workstation. It could potentially access the PLCs and uh, affect overall production. So we want to keep this as a critical asset and understand if we see any instance associated with it. Now, if we take a look at a few of the rules which are available out of the box, we can see we have different mappings between the Purdue levels. These can, for example, alert to say, if we see traffic going from level two to level five, that shouldn't be expected. So generate an incident to tell us about this. Now, if we have a look at some of the dashboards, which are also available, so in this example here, we can see that we've got a variety of different incidents that are occurring. Some of these are large transfer of traffic outside of my network or home country, which you've defined within 40 sims. Some of these are related to the Modbus activity. And some of these are regarding uh, traffic from maybe level two to the internet that we shouldn't see. These networks should be quite locked down. And for many of these dashboards, you could also start an investigation to understand more what's happening. So I could take one of these and then have a look and drill down further and take us into analytics where we can see the raw events associated with that widget and that specific IP address we chose to filter on. We can see the firewall name and then if we wanted to, we could also modify the filter and look at all traffic to all destinations from the level two defined devices in the Purdue model and see what's occurring. And here, what we're actually seeing, we're seeing some IP addresses occurring uh, within the United States, but we also see quite a bit of activity going to Singapore. Now, we've modeled our network, we know our traffic patterns, we can identify anomalous activity, potentially traffic going to Singapore isn't something that we'd expect. And we can also then start to use uh, some of the built-in capabilities within 40SIM and look this up into services such as 40Guard to find out what information we know about this IP address. And there's no match found in this because this is really just a demo as an example. But if there was some malicious activity here that we've identified, it will return the results as well. And just to come back to the instant views, a different view which is available is the MITRE ATT&CK Instant Explorer, as we call it, which allows us to filter on certain devices. We can see our engineering, and we also see that there's some exfiltration of events as well that are happening from this particular source to this particular destination, these US destinations, which might warrant a further investigation, even though it's within our own geographical area, but we're seeing a large transfer of data. So you can quickly get additional context through risk, looking at the MITRE ATT&CK framework or the uh, explorer views on the ATT&CK framework as well. And you can model your OT environment directly within 47.